pigs who are in this house. I'm very lucky because I've, uh, sorry, I've lost my voice a bit. I'm lucky because I've, I have the institutional memory. I have been in politics for the last 30 years. Those 30 years I've been in elected politics, about 22. Madam Speaker, the problems, the way Mze Odinga said about Kenya, have not been started by President William Bruto. If you look at the history, and Madam Speaker, the other day people were asking me, how did you tell that these young Gen Zs are actually going to come to the streets after one year? I said, I look at the trend. If you look at Independence 1962-3, that was the 20 years beyond where the liberation movement took place. After that, we got independence. It took another 20 years for us to have a military coup. The people who are guiding and who are in it within that military to coup are not old men like Jaramogi or Charles Njonjo at that time. It was young Gen Z students of the University of Nairobi and young people who believed in the ideal of what Kenya was. The second issue that came up, Madam Speaker, was after by the year 2002, that was another 20 years, then you come to 2022, I mean to 2002 is when Kibaki was elected, is when we have a referendum, is when we have a new constitution, and then we say Kenya is now on the right path. After that, Madam Speaker, we did not follow the letter of the constitution. What many of us have never understood is that your democracy is as valid and as reasonable and as verifiable and is implementable as the people who are willing to follow and implement that constitution. We have completely failed our people. And that is why when the elections took over and we had challenges, and that is why when you look at our country and the crisis that has come up, when you look at the issues which are bedeviling our country, you realize that we are on quicksand. Unless you have old men and old women, people of dignity and decency, people who have got wisdom, people who are not greedy to fix this country, we will not have a country very soon. Madam Speaker, I've served as an assistant minister. I went to Cote d'Ivoire, sent by President Kibaki to go and visit President Bagbo. I got into his house. He was wearing a vest. That time the military was around him. He was being deposed. Two weeks later, he went home with his wife. They were half naked. Those sins are not sins that Africa should be proud of. Madam Speaker, our country has broken down. Our country has challenges. But before I go to how, in a short notice, what we can do, I would like to ask the President, and I asked him the other day, the children who died and the children who are in the prisons, please remove them. Those who have died, I want to ask this House, the Senate, let us make sure that those children get a state funeral. Those who are not criminals, these are children who had reached a dead end. Madam Speaker, what is wrong with our, company, our country? We call it a company. With shareholders. Our country is not a company. Our company is Kenya, which is a state. It has 50 million people who all expect and demand certain services from the state. We, the politicians in this house, I heard my colleagues speak. I am so happy that we are now telling each other the truth. We are the ones who carry militias. We are the ones who go and carry cattle rustlers. We are the ones who have got companies that are doing business in government departments. We are the ones who are stealing the money. Look at the national government, call, call it down, bring it down to the National Assembly. We must begin to look at issues like CDF. We must look at the Women Fund. We must look at the structure. Do we need all the people who have been given offices? Why are, I've been asking this publicly. Why are governors running county governments as if they are private companies where they are stealing money, buying properties abroad, driving such big vehicles, including ourselves? Why, when did we decide that I must drive a car which is 4.8 cc? that at 3,000 cc is not good enough. 
when our children don't have medicines, when our women are not giving birth, when we can't feed our, class, our children, when we buy fertilizer, we deal on it, we sell some of it, we sell mchanga. We are bringing it maize when we are supposed to be planting maize and giving uh, farmers fertilizers and giving them funds so that we can get production and increase that so that we create jobs for our people. It is we politicians who won't buy two million tons, two million metric tons of maize. We come and sell. We bring three million metric tons of sugar cane. Mumias is dying. Chemelil is dying. Sony sugar is dying. Those are factories that are used to employ people. Who are the biggest dealers of investment companies in Kenya? We, the political class. What happened to Kenya Airways? Look at it now. It's smelly, filthy. It was the pride of Africa. Who runs Kenya Power? Why are we not told who are the owners of the independent power suppliers of this country? Why are we not being told who owns our national parks? But you hear money is being stolen by none other than the elite and the political class. These people out here are tired. These people are tired. I was crying this morning today because we are messing up a good thing. We are messing up this country. Who wants to be a refugee? And there's enough for you people to eat so long as you eat with manners. The revenue we collect is enough to run eight African countries, Kenya, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania. You go to Congo. You go to South Sudan, you go to Somalia, and you go to Ethiopia. That's what our gold damn budget is. Just manage it, don't steal it. A few people are stealing too much. These kids out here, they know everything. They know your houses, they know where your kids go to school, they know which properties of land you have. Why must somebody have four million acres of land to his name? What happened to our mentality that we pretend and run to churches talking about Christianity, how Jesus... Do you understand what you are dealing with? The people out here don't even believe in God anymore. The people out here are tired of the lies. The religious organizations. And I have to say this, I'm a Catholic. I was so happy I saw the purple nausea. Talk about the issues of a country. Let us forget that we can run this country as tribes. Let us accept that there is a new sheriff in town. That sheriff is the GNC. They are partyless. They are tribeless. They don't have money. They just have bundles and a phone. And they'll stop this country to move. I would like to plead with the members of this house. When it comes to looking at what role our committees are playing. Look at what happens. I want to thank my brothers, uh, Sifuna, uh, my brother Chirarge. I want to thank uh, Madam Dulo. These are, if, many of you may not know, we've never discussed it here. How many times we've been threatened that we are raising issues about county governments, losing billions. And, I mean, who doesn't know how many governors own apartments and houses in Kilimani Road? Each one of them owning an apartment costing 1.5 billion shillings. Why didn't the fool just go and build a hospital where he comes from? How I wish we stole the money and put it at home. Some of them are going to Dubai. People are going to America. You see on social media. I just bought me. I just saw somebody commenting saying that oh, the senators have nothing to do. I want him to tell me how he bought a Bentley and is an MP. Explain to me. How does somebody... I mean, the truth is, I'm born with advantage and privilege. That is the truth. I saw my father driving a big car when I was a small boy. That is not what drives me. What drives me is how do you get a memo parliament driving a Mercedes that costs 49 million shillings and we are watching and that is normal and it is okay. And it is okay. Shame on us. Then we make sure this money doesn't go to the schools. We make sure that hospitals have no money. We start building hospitals now. We want the poor people to come to those hospitals. Poor people can't come to Nairobi Hospital. They can't come to Aga Khan. They can't, some of them can't afford Kenyatta. You saw the other day, Kenyatta has a debt of 6.6 .6 billion. The Eldoret Hospital. Elder KTRH has a debt of 3.9 billion. When you ask, they tell you we don't know where the money went. Are we fools? Do we need to buy houses which have got 15 bedrooms and drive 19 cars and put them in your parking lot and you want 10,000 acres of land? You want a ranch? 
You fools, you want to buy a ranch in Australia. This is where we are. We keep blaming the police. The policeman cannot do anything. Have we ever gone as a Senate to go and see where the police lives? How he takes his kids to school and his salary is 19,000. And this house has to start thinking about those things. We guys must begin, and le we ladies and gentlemen in this house must begin to agree that we can reduce our salaries, that we can drive smaller cars, that we can wear counters. In fact, the only thing I'm very annoyed about the president, I'm the one who started wearing counters. Now he has given counter a bad name. I want Kenyans to love counters the way I love them. Let us wake up, Kenyans. We can't play football. Money comes from FIFA, it is eaten. World Rally Championship, money comes from there, it's eaten. You go, you want Kenya Loan Tennis Association, they only want 50,000 to hold an international uh, tennis tournament. Not even a minister appears there. But when the minister is traveling out of the country, he's got how many people? Private jet, goes to Dubai, books one of those hotels, luxury hotels, and he comes back to Nairobi with the same nine people he took with a private jet. And you assume that the Gen Z's don't know. These days they track you. They can know which private jet you took, where it went, and how it came back. Many of us are worried because either because of history or because of what has happened, we have got a lot of money now. We are owning so much land. Please allow us to have spatial planning. Your land, we can have an implemented law in this house to protect your even identity. But please don't stop stealing public land. Let us have mercy at our people. You saw people in from Eldoret and Kakamega talking about oh, our chambers which our grandfathers left for us. Now you guys who are MPs and senators, you come, you chase us away, and then you throw us into court. You go and bribe the courts. And I want to talk about the judiciary. We respect you. We know that you are most of the time under the pressure. We know there are certain things which you can even be blackmailed. But we want to hold you at a higher standard. We must hold the judiciary at a higher standard, the legislators at the higher standard, and make sure the president is also at the higher standard. That is how we can move as a country and stop these nonsense. We, can't, we behave like monkeys running through a forest looking for bananas without knowing whether it's the bananas they want or it's oranges. I really, really want to say this, Madam Speaker, finally. I was nearly giving up on my country. I have changed my mind because of today. The young men who are fighting for this country have done us proud. Let us treat them with dignity. Let us make sure we engage them. Let us stop doing the things which make them angry, desperate, and upset with the ruling class. The truth is, if this country breaks down, it takes all of us down. I can tell you, I was in South Sudan when we were doing the comprehensive peace agreement. I visited as a minister, as a young minister, to go and do what was called a referendum. I've been to Khartoum. I have been to Mali. I've been to uh, um, a country in West Africa. Um, I'll remember the name, Madam Speaker. You look at how people have been treated and how the political class has treated their people. Everybody looks destitute, and everybody is desperate. Let us change our ways. We can run the country peacefully, make sure everybody is a person of dignity. Let's treat our people kindly. A country that never takes care of its most vulnerable is a country that is not worth talking about. So I want to ask the political class, I want to ask all our auditors, I want to ask all members of the county assembly, Please, members of the county assembly, your job is to oversight, the MP's job is to oversight, and the senator's job is to oversight. Let the governors run the place. If they bribe you, you will not get development. Let us agree that those are the rules that we'll have to operate with. And let us share the cake of this country equitably and fairly. Let us not have one region getting 50 billion when one area has got only 1.2 billion. And when you are giving scholarships, why should we have three scholarship funds in this country? 
those are some of the things, Madam Speaker, without speaking too much, I want to vent. And I thank all my colleagues for having shown our country the love that it deserved. Thank you so much. Senator Perry Stabiko.